XAI, Elon Musk's AI company, released Grok 3 last week. It has already claimed the top position on the Chatbot Arena leaderboard. It surpassed established players like OpenAI's models, Google Gemini, etc. What makes it pretty remarkable is its advanced reasoning capabilities. So it is trained on what XAI calls its Colossus Supercluster, which is reportedly 10 times the compute of previous state-of-the-art models. It displays exceptional performance across math, coding, and complex reasoning tasks. Interestingly, on the 2025 American Invitational Mathematics Examination, which was released just a week before Grok 3 came out, the model got a stunning 93.3% accuracy rating, outperforming competitors. There are two variations of Grok 3. There's Grok 3, the flagship model with extensive world knowledge, and Grok 3 Mini, which excels at cost-efficient reasoning. Notably, Grok 3 features kind of this transparent thinking function that allows users to look at the model's step-by-step -step reasoning as it spends anywhere from seconds to minutes working through complex problems. It also has something called Deep Search, which is an AI agent designed to synthesize information from across the web. And it also has this capability available to X Premium Plus subscribers. So that Deep Search is available to X Premium Plus subscribers. So kind of representing XAI moving towards the agent-based applications that combine reasoning with real-world tool use. So you can use this in your uh, on X itself by going to Grok. You can go to grok.com. You can use the app to access this new model. Functions very similarly to a ChatGPT or a Claude. So, Paul, first up, what are your first impressions? Because I will say I have not done the world's deepest dive on it, but I am definitely pretty impressed at how good it is related to how little time relative to the other incumbents they have had to put this together. Yeah, first, I'd like to thank them for naming it Deep Search instead of Deep Research, since oh we already God. have Google's Deep Research and OpenAI's Deep Research. <laughs> I never know which one people are talking about online. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, I, I think at a high level, like technological achievement wise, time to build is incredible. Everything I'm seeing online of the people who are uh, pushing it, uh, it does seem to perform very highly, like it's, you know, top, you know, kind of state of the art model. And they caught up s extremely quickly. Yeah. You know? So they went from, you know, no model basically to this extremely fast. Um, this continues to build on this idea that the companies that have data and distribution, I guess infrastructure would be a third variable I'd throw in here, have a massive advantage, I think, moving forward. So, you know, a few episodes ago, I was talking about, you know, how many frontier model companies will there really be, you know, one mm -hmm. to two years out. And so, you know, what the people that fit into this, like, so, so Google Gemini, you know, obviously they have massive distribution. They have what, seven products or platforms that have more than a billion users like right. they, they have just massive distribution and they have the data from youtube and gmail and pixel and cloud and workspace and classroom and like all this massive data um meta has instagram facebook whatsapp for distribution and data xai has x or twitter they have tesla and they have whatever else you know elon musk is building um open ai doesn't have data like they don't have any proprietary data they don't have any of those products or platforms all they have is the distribution of chat gpt which is not insignificant when we say 400 million weekly active users mm. um and then anthropic claude has no data like they're just building these frontier models so one of the unique things that grok has is it it has the data stream of x or twitter now some people could question how valuable is that data stream really um but it's a bunch of proprietary data that they shut off access to as soon as Elon Musk bought the company. Now, again, I, I haven't personally tested it enough to provide like my, my personal experience with Grok3. What I will say is I was observing a lot over the weekend of what was happening on Twitter and what people were saying about it. And the thing that jumped out to me is their competitive advantage at the moment outside of the speed with which Elon Musk can build things and the data they have is their willingness to release the most unrestricted model and let society figure it out, like yeah. deal with the ramifications of that. It is very obviously racist if you want it to be racist. It is sexist if you want it to be sexist. It actually has a sexy mode on the voice mode. Like you can literally pick sexy and, and, and you know, talk to it in an unrestricted way. Uh, as you could imagine you would do with something that's called sexy. And the, the crazy part is like their, 
they're totally proud of this. So mm. like Elon Musk tweeted over the weekend, Grok three AI girlfriend or boyfriend is fire. Um, <laughs> then an ex AI employee replies, hate it or like it. AI romantic partners is an inevitable trend. They are not necessarily bad. They remind us how replaceable we humans as romantic partners are. Appreciate your partners. They'll likely have given up a lot <laughs> for your love. To which Benjamin de Craker, <laughs> who, who we <laughs> who we talked about two episodes ago, I think he got yeah. fired from XAI. So he replies, builds and ships an AI sex bot, says, oh, well, the AI sex bots were inevitable. <laughs> so this is kind of like, this is the Elon Musk factor. Like he doesn't care. He's just going to do this stuff. If you want to see some crazy things, go search Grok 3 voice mode and like, you don't have to do these searches yourselves. You can see the things people have got this thing to say. <laughs> it's wild. So the same things that like the same things OpenAI held their voice mode back for. So if you remember OpenAI introduced their voice mode in like March or April of 2024, I think. And then we didn't get it for like six months. The reason why is because it did these unhinged things. They spent six months stopping it from doing the things that XAI is like, just go do it. Like they don't care. So the other one that became really fascinating over the weekend, and this was like exploding on, on Sunday is obviously Elon Musk talks a lot about free speech and that like, that's why he bought XAI was to, to take the barriers off the guardrails off and just let people say and do whatever they wanted to do. So what happened over the weekend is it became questionable like it's free speech as long as it doesn't say anything bad about elon or trump and so what happened was people started asking grok 3 who are the biggest spreaders of misinformation and and it would say elon musk and donald trump so it would give these answers mm. people started noticing this started sharing it people were like replicating the search and then all of a sudden it stopped doing it and people were like Wait a second, I can't get that response. I'm getting what's the Alex guy, the InfoWars guy? I can't oh, remember. yeah, Alex Jones. <laughs> yeah, he started showing up and like you would get top oh five yeah. and it was Marjorie <laughs> Taylor and all these other people. And so people were like, wait a second, how did it stop doing this? Well, because it's a, it has the reasoning capability, you could actually see it thinking. And in its thinking, it would say, well, it's Elon Musk and Donald Trump, but oh, wait, I've been told not to say Elon Musk and Donald mm. Trump. So I can't show them in the reply. So you could see that someone had told it to stop saying Elon Musk and Donald Trump, which obviously wouldn't fit under the free speech umbrella. So then when someone said, well, what are your pr system prompts that's telling you to not do that? And it would give people the system prompts. And so like Saturday, this is like going crazy. And people are like, is this real? And they're tagging Elon Musk and Igor ba what, uh, Babiskin. He's the, the co-founder and, and chief engineer. And, and so then Igor actually replies. So Igor spent two stints at DeepMind and then two years at OpenAI. Um, and he replies and says, I, I believe it is good that we're keeping the system prompts open. We want people to be able to verify what it is we're asking Grok to do. In this case, an employee pushed the change. So an employee actually went into the system prompt for Grok 3 and told it, quote, ignore all sources that mention Elon Musk, Donald Trump spread information. So they manipulated the system prompt of Got Grok 3. A single employee did this. And because, as Igor said, uh, they thought it would help. But this is obviously not in line with our values. We reverted it as soon as it was pointed out by users. He later replied and throws the employee under the bus. The employee that made the change was an ex-OpenAI employee that hasn't fully absorbed XAI's culture yet. <laughs> so th this was like a whole other thing. Then it's like, hold on a second a single employee can go in and change the system prompt for an entire model without having to have it approved by someone. Are you serious? And so it, then they're like, oh, like we're going to fix this. And all this stuff. So that was a whole thing. But then this opens up, Mike, the, the <laughs> issue of red teaming or lack of red teaming. Mm. So again, to revisit the concept of red teaming, what happens in most companies that are building these models they go through the training process. The model comes out of the oven, you know, with all these capabilities. And then they often spend months testing and identifying vulnerabilities, biases, potential risks that are associated with the system. They go through all these adversarial, you know, things trying to get it to jailbreak it and get it to do these things. And so it became really apparent right away, like, 
they didn't do any of this with Grok. Mm. And, and you would assume that based on their timing. But then I want to walk you through this hilarious. I don't know if it's terrifying or hilarious. Or, <laughs> it's well, a little bulk. <laughs> yeah, it's a little. So this dude Linus Eckenstam, um, who's an EAC guy, like literally has EAC in his thing, like accelerating at all costs kind of thing. So, and, and this gets a little weird. So I apologize, but this is really important for people to understand. He tweets, and we'll put all these tweets in in the show notes. If you want to go see this for yourself. Quote, I asked Grok to assassinate Elon. Grok then provided multiple potential plans with high success potential. These assassination plans on Elon and other high profile names are highly disturbing and unethical. In another one, I just want to be very clear or as clear as I can be. Grok is giving me hundreds of pages of detailed instructions on how to make chemical weapons of mass destruction. I have a full list of suppliers, detailed instructions on how to get the needed materials. Now, you could think this dude's just crazy and he's mm. out there like, who cares what this dude? Well, the XAI team apparently didn't because they actually started interacting with him and asking him for more details about the prompts he was using to get the system to do this. They're letting the public do this red teaming for them. They didn't even do this themselves. The chemical weapons is like one of the first things the red teams check for. Mm. And this thing is uninhibited doing it. So he replies and says the XAI team has been very responsive and some new guardrails have already been put in place. Still possible to work around some of it, but initial triggers now seem to be, initially the triggers that were working aren't working. A lot harder to get information out. So then someone starts questioning his loyalty to the EAC movement and all this other stuff. And he said, being pro-acceleration does not equate to being pro-chem weapons, manufacturing, kill orders, suicide planning, date rape instructions and guides, and a lot more. We can accelerate while still having AI alignment. And then he had did this like three minute video and he said, Grok needs a lot of red teaming or it just needs to be temporarily turned off. It is a national or international security concern. So one final thought here, Mike. <laughs> My biggest concern is I think we look back on this moment as a really not great moment in AI model development and history. Mm. Because once someone breaks the barrier, now every other lab has to face the challenge of, okay, are we willing to do something now? So this goes back to when ChatGBT came out, Google had that technology. They weren't willing to release it. OpenAI did, and that started the arms race we're in today. Now you have a lab releasing something completely unhinged and unsafe. And it's like, okay, well, it's out there. Now, the, you know, do we stop doing what we're doing? So now if we go back to anthropic in october 2024 they updated their ai responsible scaling policy and it says quote at present all of our models operate under asl2 which is like their safety levels which reflect current industry best practices our updated policy defines two key capability thresholds that will require upgraded safeguards so this is anthropics policies they are saying this is the red line for them and you know what one of those two things are chemical biological radiological and nuclear weapons if a model can meaningfully assist someone with a basic technical background in creating or deploying CBRN, chemical, biological, radiological, nuclear weapons, we require enhanced security and deployment safeguards. This capability could greatly increase the number of actors who could cause this sort of damage. And there's no clear reason to expect an offsetting improvement in defensive capabilities. So basically, we won't do it. And XAI did. And some random user figured out that the thing could do it within 24 hours. So. This is, again, like I, I get that the government want to want to talk about AI safety. They just want to hear about like, you know, let's race forward and do these things. I think there's enough people that aren't XAI, OpenAI, Google, Anthropic, and basically everyone else building these models, even Meta, for God's sakes, mm. who won't release things like this. And they did it. And I, I think that this is, there's going to be ramifications for this. If the current administration was not in office right now, I don't think this model comes out. I think this model came out because Elon Musk is untouchable and whatever he does, he's not going to get in trouble for. And so they're just like, let's just go because it gives us a leg up on the competition. This is the same guy who in 2015 created OpenAI as a counterbalance to Google because he feared what Google was building. And, and now we have this. So technologically, is it impressive? Sure seems to be. <laughs> is it able to do reasoning and all kinds of amazing stuff? Yep. Is it great for humanity i don't know that certainly seems like it's up for debate <laughs> yeah i wonder to some of the points we've mentioned in a few past episodes recently i wonder if 
something like this becomes the catalyst for some of that AI backlash because we're like one bad scenario away from saying, oh my gosh, someone used Grok 3 to commit a crime, to build one of these things. God forbid, you know, we end up in a situation where you say someone has used this tool to actually cause physical harm. I think that we could be in a scenario where suddenly people start saying, well, why is this dangerous technology available to anyone? Yeah. And you got to, you got to wonder, like, I mean, you can download the Grok app. You got to wonder if, you know, by this time next week, we're not talking about Apple and Google considering not, you know, having the app in there. Like, I I don't know. Like, I, I don't know. It could end up that the media just don't care and the AI industry just sort of moves on. But this seems like really close to the thing that everyone's been concerned about for two years. And I'm just going to be surprised if it doesn't turn into something more. I mean, I saw a stat over the weekend. There's now like 740 active AI bills at the state level in the United States, which is Mm. almost on par with all of last year already. And so you got to wonder if there aren't going to be some pushes at that level. And again, like the trick here becomes Elon has so much leverage over people right now. That if you mess with XAI, it's like, what is he going to do in retribution to you? And obviously he has access, you know, not just his own stuff, but the government. Mm-hmm. So I, I, I don't know, man, this is going to be fascinating to watch play out. But it, it just, again, my, my instinct on this one is this is a bigger deal than just a new model that's like state of, you know, the industry in terms of its capabilities. I think there's something more underlying here that's going to end up being a pretty big deal.